Welcome to the show. My name is Megan Nilsson, aka Crypto Megan, tuning in from sunny southern Marbella, Spain. Yesterday, we had some beautiful vanilla skies. I'll throw a picture up here so you can see just how truly gorgeous it is. I am so happy to be here. It's an exciting time to be alive. Lots of positive change in the crypto markets amidst the chaos and uncertainty in the world around us. And today, I'll be breaking down ARK Invest Big Ideas Mega Price Prediction for Ethereum going into 2030 with a prediction of a whopping $20 trillion market cap and skyrocketing to a $165,000 price for Ethereum. I'll break down just exactly how that's possible, as well as my prediction for the Ethereum price this bull run, and also how I would invest $1,000 getting prepared for the coming bull run. So if you like that, hit the subscribe button and let me know where you're tuning in from. I want to say hello. I am so happy to be here with all of you. And without further ado, let's dive right into it. So to kick off today's episode, I wanted to give a little bit of context as to just where we are in this current market cycle. And here I have some of the key ingredients for the next crypto bull market, which are the Fed pivot, spot ETFs, the Bitcoin halving, and Ethereum scaling leading to institutional participation. This Ethereum scaling is going to be a foundation for this episode and just all the reasons why I believe Ethereum should be a staple part of everyone's portfolio, even though it's not the hottest, shiniest, sexiest coin at the moment, which is precisely when you should be paying attention. So let's continue. Now, as a little bit of context for Ethereum, it had some major issues when it was still a proof of work coin. And as many of you may remember, if you were around during this time, when Board Ape Yacht Club did its infamous other side drop, I'm a member of Board Ape Yacht Club, just shout out to all my apes in the audience. Um, so during this drop, $150 million was burned in gas fees. And uh, it is not sustainable and it's just, it, it was no good. Ethereum needed a change and so it transitioned to proof of stake. And now the fees are going to be much lower, much faster, much more scalable. And Ethereum is actually going to start becoming a deflationary token. It is already being burned. And that is one of the key, key components to it having less supply and more demand over time. So here we have also, it is the one year anniversary, exactly one year ago in response to Coindesk article that CZ advised to sell the company's holdings of the FTT token, which amounted to 580 million. This triggered a wide sell off of a bank run, which forced FTX to halt withdrawals. One year ago today, we've come a long way since then. I'm proud of you if you've been around since then and you're still here, you're gonna win. Next up, important news. China does not want to miss out. Community reacts to Hong Kong spot Bitcoin ETF news. So China has come out and said, hey, we don't want to miss out on this either. If the US is going to continue to fumble and drive innovation away, there are other countries that are willing to step in and fill that void. So this is exactly what this article is detailing saying here, Hong Kong's potential entrance into spot ETFs could be a significant development in the context of the ec economic confrontation between the U.S. and China, says Arthur Hayes. Competition is amazing. If the U.S. has its proxy asset manager, BlackRock, launching an ETF, China needs its pro proxy asset manager to launch one too. The U.S. versus China economic war is great for Bitcoin. So as you can see, this is a currency war. This is a, a different type of war than we're used to, but things are changing and things are shifting. Hong Kong's potential move into spot Bitcoin ETFs comes at least as at least a dozen investment firms in the U.S. seek to launch similar products in country in the country, despite long running pushback from the SEC. OK, so it's on. The competition is on and not only are institutions getting FOMO, but countries are getting FOMO. I mean, if this doesn't make you bullish on this up and coming bull market, I don't know what will during the other side mint. I mean, it was absolutely atrocious. To set the tone a little bit, although today I'll be talking about Ethereum and the price predictions for Ethereum and why you should hold Ethereum, I'm gonna set the tone by showing you this chart, this Bitcoin chart, comparing this cycle and this exact move and pattern formation to 
the October, November, 2020 formation that we had. And as you can see, we could be right here at this exact point in the cycle when a lot of people are saying this is a rising wedge, this is gonna break down from here, we're gonna have our big correction from here. We might actually just surprise everyone and take off. And as I said in the last video, if you didn't watch the last video, go and watch it now, I'll link to it at the end. This this move could be brewing up to be a similar move here now in October, November 2023 in the same time fractal period. And that's when we took off exponentially. We hit the top of our of our channel here. We corrected a little and then it was off to the races. And we had our big correction when we hit the top of this measured move. As I went over yesterday, I showed a big chart about this yesterday. But what I'm saying is simply everyone expects it to break down out of this rising wedge since that's typically these formations are bearish, but when it breaks up, it's an exponential move upward as it's defying the odds. And this often happens in this transition or the switch into a bull market for Bitcoin. So just be on your guard and don't be waiting for that magical number. Just stick to your dollar cost averaging strategy. It is tried and true. Next up, Ethereum. Now we're going to get into the heart of what this episode is about. Why should you hold Ethereum? I know what you're thinking. Well, why wouldn't I just go for all the other altcoins that will have way more potential to move faster and harder this cycle? And that is because Ethereum is more like the stable giant, just like Bitcoin. It hedges your, your risk against other altcoins that could be more prone to see ups and downs with Bitcoin's ups and downs. And Ethereum is the safest bet as far as what will the institutions want next? What is all the money going to flow into next? And, and honestly, the narrative of the Ethereum killers of Solana, of Cardano, I love those coins and I actually do hold them, but I don't believe that that is going to come into fruition anytime soon. I believe Ethereum is a very important staple part of the crypto community as a whole. And you're going to see why as we break it down in this episode. So the total value locked in all, cha all chains, as you can see here, Ethereum is the big daddy. Over 54% of total value locked is in Ethereum. And let's have a look at some other Ethereum stats as of late. Ethereum Network's large wallet investors have been accumulating ETH tokens consistently for six months. ETH price recovery is likely to be catalyzed by declining exchange supply and rising whale accumulation. Ethereum witnessed a spike in the holdings of large wallet investors in the network. Supply of the altcoin held by large addresses as a percentage of the total supply has climbed consistently between May and November 2023. So Ethereum whale accumulation sig signals vo upside volatility. So basically whales have been accumulating Ethereum. So according to data aggregator into the block this week, $210 million worth of ETH left centralized exchanges. So whales have been accumulating and taking it off exchanges while everybody else is attracted to the shiniest, uh, craziest crypto that's pumping at the moment, whales are silently accumulating ETH. So we should be paying attention. We should be doing this before the ETF hype comes because that's the next part of this video. And in yesterday's video, I explained it much more in depth. Today, I'm just gonna do a very brief retouch on what is happening. All of the hype right now and all of the interest is in the Bitcoin ETF. Even in China now comes out and says, we're gonna launch our, potentially launch our spot Bitcoin ETF. But what's next, guys? What is next? It is the Ethereum spot ETF and it is far from being priced in, far from it. So when that comes, everybody's then going to shift their attention to Ethereum. And like clockwork, Ethereum is going to start to steal the spotlight. The last narrative of the last bull run was when will the flippening happen? There was a lot more excitement around ETH last bull run around this time. However, we didn't have the other shiny Ethereum killers that were in the spotlight. Well, Solana didn't have its big narrative yet. So I think now is a great time to be positioning and paying attention to Ethereum. Um, and moving right along, actually, this is a very bullish chart as well. The number of addresses deposited to the beacon chain. So as you can see here, ETH beacon chain deposits. So it's only increasing over time. There was a lot of FUD going on that like, what if after this launch, people were just going to dump and take it off. Now, so let's go over, let's go over some bullish landmarks for Ethereum. The Ethereum network has witnessed a significant surge in transaction volumes, hitting a new six-month high. Over last week, the mainnet settled over $213 billion in transactions, underscoring a robust uptick in on-chain activity. Layer 2 solutions such as Arbitrum and Optimism and Base 
have further buoyed this growth, adding another $16 billion to the aggregated volume. This uptrend reflects growing confidence and utility in, Ethereum, in the Ethereum ecosystem, suggesting an increasingly vibrant blockchain landscape. There is, there is a massive community that is using Ethereum. Over the past week, the network burned an average of 855,000 ETH per year, a mechanism that could contribute to deflationary pressure on the token supply over time. The burn counteracts the issuance of new ETH, aiming to create a balance that can benefit the asset's long-term valuation. So this is all positive news for Ethereum that we actually didn't have the last bull run. And even in that scenario and in that environment, ETH ran all the way up to $4,900. Crazy. Next up, I went over this yesterday. I'm going to touch on this briefly right now. So the race is on for the Ethereum spot ETF. All, all of the world right now is paying attention to BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF, but we are staying two, three, four, and even five steps ahead of the game by looking to what's next. Ethereum is just the first in line of many, but now is the time to be paying attention when others are not. So as you can see, Vanek Arc filing officially start the clock for the spot Ethereum ETF. So this will give us an idea of when we must have an answer by the SEC on this filing. And James Seifert here says the spot Ethereum ETF raise is officially on. It's early, but I'd estimate a final deadline on these applications to be around May 23rd, 2024. So just after the Bitcoin halving is the official deadline. However, many speculate, including Kathy Wood, that as soon as the Bitcoin spot ETF is approved, Ethereum will fall closely thereafter. So it could be well, well before the state. So what are we doing? We're preparing now. And of course, then we have Grayscale that's moving to convert its Ethereum trust to a spot ETH ETF. The company's Ethereum Trust is the largest Ether investment product in the world with nearly $5 billion in assets under management. It's much easier to get an investment product that's already on the market converted to an ETF. So this is also something that is bullish for the future of Ethereum ETFs. As it says here, Grayscale Investments is in conjunction with the N New York Stock Exchange, ARCA has filed for approval from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission to convert the Grayscale Ethereum Trust to a spot Ethereum exchange traded fund. And it's much easier to do this than to file from scratch. And now we're going to jump into what you have all been waiting for, the video that is breaking down just exactly how Ethereum could reach a $20 trillion market cap by the end of this decade and a $165,000 price tag. And then right after this, I will give you my price prediction for Ethereum this coming bull run and how I would invest $1,000. So stay tuned. Of DeFi, it's important to look at how we got here. The ICO boom of 2017 and 18 quickly turned into a bust as many of the projects that had raised millions of dollars overnight failed to deliver on their promises when it came time to build. What followed was a crypto winter, which saw very little in terms of asset appreciation, but proved fertile ground for developers and those involved in the community to continue building and evolving on the technology. When that technology was ready, what followed was an explosion of growth known as DeFi Summer through the second half of 2020 that continued throughout 2021. In the past year, we saw... I don't know if how many of you are around for that but DeFi summer was absolutely explosive i mean it was it was one of the most exciting times we've ever had in crypto several days where decentralized exchanges which allow for the swapping of assets on a blockchain natively such as ethereum did more volume than coinbase assets under management on in DeFi protocols on ethereum grew to over a hundred billion dollars and stable coins issued uh, on, across blockchains also crossed $100 billion in market cap. Combined with the emergence of NFTs, which we discuss in our Web3 Big Ideas, the native currency of Ether uh, shot up to an all-time high of uh, over $4,000 in November of uh, 2021. While it has come a long way and shows great promise, Ethereum is still a work in progress. As we see more and more use cases, especially financial services functions being deployed on chain, we expect revenue and subsequent market cap to accrue to the underlying blockchain Ethereum and its native currency Ether. Based on the global financial services market cap, we believe this represents an addressable market of over $20 trillion in the next 10 years. Further, Ether is increasingly an important form of money in the economies built on top of Ethereum, 
it is the most, for example, liquid trading pair in decentralized exchanges and NFT markets, and the most common form of collateral in DeFi lending, and is also necessary to pay transaction fees. So if Ethereum were to become a significant platform powering global financial services, and Ether were to maintain its critical role as money in that economy, we expect that it could also capture a portion of the global money supply, which today currently sits at $122 trillion. So there's Frank Downing with ARK Invest, Ethereum Breakdown. Now, in case you missed it, the important slide was the last one in which ARK projects Ethereum's market cap to exceed $20 trillion over the next 10 years. Now, there's a little bit of math to break down how much that equates to per Ethereum, but if you take $20 trillion and divide it by all the outstanding Ethereum, you get to a price of just over $167,434 per ETH. But it doesn't just end there. That is the breakdown for the current outstanding supply of Ethereum, which isn't static but continuously changing. What we know is that when ETH 2.0 fully launches, which will most likely be in the next few months, Ethereum is going to go from inflationary to deflationary. So 10 years down the line when ARK expects Ethereum's market cap to exceed $20 trillion, there will be a lot less ETH on issue, making the price of one ETH much more than $167,000. There you have it. It's not only that they are projecting a $165,000 price per Ethereum in the next 10 years, however, with, however, with the deflationary mechanism in place for Ethereum, it could be well over $165,000 per Ethereum. Not bad if you ask me. Buy two or three for this bull run and stash it away in your savings, take some profits, you're good to go. Let's build a retirement fund. <laughs> there are no guarantees, but Ethereum right now is poised to completely transform the financial markets. So that brings us to the end of this episode in which I give you my price targets for this bull run for Ethereum. And like I said, I believe every portfolio should hold some Ethereum as a more stable hedge toward the rest of the coins. Would a small portfolio like $1,000 starting out have exposure to Bitcoin? I wouldn't do it. Why? Because $1,000 could at best double or triple by the end of this bull market. But with something like Ethereum, exposure to Ethereum, as well as 30 to 50% exposure to other top altcoins, you can maximize your gains a lot more and also hedge your risk a bit. So my price prediction for Ethereum for this coming bull run is anywhere between $15,000 to $20,000. A 10X, an 8X to 11X, not bad, not bad at all. We wouldn't be upset about that. However, the real juice comes in when you, you start to calculate, okay, if I want to start accumulating Ethereum for the long run as a part of my overall saving strategy or just to set it and forget it in possible retirement, how many Ethereum would I need to have $1 million saved in, by the end of 10 years? And the answer would be just around six Ethereum, which right now is still within reach over time. That being said, of course, it is essential to take profits. And actually, one of my biggest strategies is to take profits from Ethereum and put them into other altcoins that haven't run so hot yet. So how would I invest $1,000 today, right now? I would, depending on my risk strategy, where you were in your risk strategy, how much you could risk, I would put anywhere from 30 to 50% in Ethereum to hedge the rest of your bets. And the rest of the portfolio I would make up of the three top contenders right now, which are Cardano, Link, and XRP, and then have a very much smaller portion toward other altcoins, which I believe are going to be very, very bullish for the up and coming run, but perhaps a little bit higher risk. So there you have it. Even if you just did 50% Ethereum and you chose a basket of three to four other solid altcoins to make up your portfolio, you would do exponentially better than just holding Bitcoin. So if you want to grow your wealth, you've got to pick these altcoins and get into them now. And depending on your risk tolerance is how much Ethereum you may hold. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you got something out of it. Start stacking those ethers. Now is the time. The hype will come like clockwork and we will be ready on the Crypto Making channel. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you tomorrow.